Okay, welcome to a short tutorial on Ion Water. Uh, Ion Water is a software system to manage your water usage on Skidaway Island. Uh, and today is July 27th of 2016. And uh, at this point, most of the Utilities Inc. Uh, Utilities Inc. our water provider uh, has installed the Badger uh, meters at your home, which allow use of Ion Water. So the first thing we want to do when you come to Ion Water is to insert your uh, your zip code. Uh, just go ahead and wait a little bit. Don't press enter, and then you'll see Utilities Inc. Our water provider is who you'll need to sign under. After that, you'll have a, your service account ID. You'll need to enter this. The number is available on your Utilities Inc. water bill, and you'll find it on the top of the water bill. And then right from that point, all you'll be doing is you'll be hitting next. Uh, after you hit next, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be asked to set up a username and password, uh, and that information will be sent back to you via email, and then you'll, you'll get another message saying, welcome to Ion Water, and your username and password are activated. So that's all it takes to get started. Um, going forward, after you uh, receive your password and you log into Ion Water, you'll be able to uh, to see this screen and this will be uh, the screen that most of y'all will be seeing as you log in. If you do have multiple accounts you can hit the, the task bar or the drop down bar and then you'll see the other accounts if you have multiple accounts with, um, with Utilities Inc. Uh, most people won't. Some people do have uh, uh, more than one account for irrigation and their home. Uh, so just a quick at a glance, so let's go to that first. You, you can see where you're trending versus the, the, the day prior or the, or the week prior. Are you up or are you down over the last seven days? Um, and then what are you averaging? You can see your average. And then you can click and just scroll over um, your usage and it'll show you what you used the Thursday or the, the day prior. Obviously we're at the Delegal docks here so you can see uh, very seasonal. Um, Saturday and Sunday usually are uh, peak days. Uh, heading down to the lower part of the graph, you'll see that we have uh, water usage, and you can look at this really any way you want to. Uh, you can look at your water by the hour. Uh, one thing I would say, click back and forth on the day. Uh, sometimes it'll help you to load uh, the data. Uh, but you can see here on Wednesday, uh, we're not fully, all of our data is not fully loaded, we'll really back up to Tuesday. And you can just see throughout the day where you're, if you have uh, water usage or not. Uh, a good thing for the Delegal docks, as you can see here from 1 to 3 o'clock at night, there's zero usage, so we can tell then that we have a watertight system. Uh, just looking forward, you can also look at the information by month, and you can look at the information by year. One thing to note, the meters were installed at Delegal in March, so we still have a short matter of, uh, or a short, uh, small data set to look at. Um, so let's just look at the day real quick. We can also overlay some additional information. Uh, so if we just uh, look up more options, um, we can then look at um, some overlays. So we can put the average temperature over the data, the max temperature, and then the precipitation. This is really a good, useful tool for members uh, or customers of Utilities Inc. Uh, to realize if you are watering your grass specifically uh, on those wet days or when we have rain. So just a neat way to look at, uh, at the data. You'll see in the very lower portion of the screen you can export the data if you want to analyze it in different software. Um, and so uh, just something really to to take a look at and help you uh, monitor your usage of water. Uh, proceeding over to leak detection very quickly, um, you can set up leak alerts uh, and so it'll tell you if you have a problem. There are two ways to look at leaks. One is uh, an intermittent flow and the other is continuous flow. Now a person would want to set up an intermittent flow if they expect that there would be um, if you would go, if your flow would be zero at any time during the night. So if you don't have like a large ice maker, a fridge ice maker should not 
um, cause be cause for this for not using this but if you have like a big ice maker that uses water all night long you would not want to do intermittent flow uh, you would do continuous flow because you do have continuous flow going through your home so think about it do I have continuous flow or do I not so uh, let's just take you through very quickly so I have a large ice maker or something uses water around the clock at my home we would then go back and start to take a look at um, what we expect to use in that in over that period of time per hour and so um, you can set highs and lows I think most importantly you would set a high to say the max usage that I ever use um, over a period is X so I'll set a number a little lower than this so let's just say um, if I have a continuous flow over 40 gallons uh, an hour uh, then I want to be alerted this would mean that you have something uh, running greater than uh, just your ice maker so it's good to understand what your hourly flow is so you can set something just a little bit higher uh, and then lastly you just go through and you type in your email uh, and you can just type it in here uh, and after you get your email in just put plus um, you can see my email is already in there but if you wanted additional emails you can go ahead and put those in as well uh, another thing is how often you want to be reminded uh, by the day, every two days, week, or the month. So you have that option, all depending on how you're interested in using it. Uh, if you want your, your status active, you can, inact you can make it inactive. You can make it active. Uh, you can stop uh, the alerts. You can send the alerts as reminders. So if a reminder, if you do set reminders and you set it by the day, you'll get a reminder each day. If you hit start, then you'll start from this point on and it'll give you reminders going forward um, about your usage. You'll hit save, it'll take a little bit of time. Uh, and this one's taking maybe a little bit longer than normal. Uh, but normally that, that process of saving an alert is uh, really just seconds. Uh, so let me click off of that very quickly. Another way to set a leak alert is intermittent flow. Again, remember the intermittent flow means that you do expect to have zero usage at some point during the night. So again, we're looking at continuous flow to exceed blank gallons per hour. So the idea if you're using, if your toilet's broken, if you have a leaky pipe, uh, this is continuous, this isn't peak. So every time you pass that, it doesn't pass that limit you're okay but if you peak uh, you can peak right over it but if you're steadily using 10 gallons an hour that's the way to think of it am I steadily using that amount of water not it's not going to alert you anytime you exceed it it's just going to make sure if it's a sustained use of water like that again you'll do the same put your email press plus and uh, put in the day that you want it uh, if you want to be reminded by the day the month uh, or every two days. Again, you have the same notifications, the start uh, reminder and stop, and you can save that as well. Um, overall, um, that's just a very quick look at, at Ion Water, uh, and uh, just make sure that you get to sign out uh, at the end of each uh, session, and hope that uh, y'all enjoy this new way of uh, being able to look at your water and make sure that you're, uh, you're monitoring your use at your home uh, within uh, or on Skidaway Island. Thank you.